student survivors from Parkland, Florida take a trip to southern Wisconsin. Their message, first tonight at 10. Plus, a six-hour standoff ends with two injuries and a man behind bars. An update straight ahead. And later, caught on camera, a car goes airborne and crashes into a gas station. How it happened right now. This is News 3 at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. March for Our Lives activists, including several survivors from the high school shooting in Parkland, are touring Wisconsin today in support of gun reform. They made a pair of stops, including Madison tonight. Madeline O'Neill joins us with how these kids are pushing for change. Madeline? Charlotte, in preparation for upcoming elections, March for Our Lives and area activists are using the momentum of their movement to encourage young adults to get registered to vote. It is one of the most important things that kids our age can do. March for Our Lives activists are getting their voices heard. In the same way that you have the right to bear arms, we have the right to live. And, and they want Madison area voters to have that chance as well. Right now we're creating a movement. The March for Our Lives students are going around and speaking with different youth in different cities that have been affected by gun violence. And so gun violence is one issue uh, out of many issues. Um, and by voting is a way that your voice can be heard. During a stop in Wisconsin, a town hall meeting bringing Parkland and Madison area students together is focusing on gun reform. Young people are really seeing that their vote matters just as much as anyone else's. While activists are preparing young adults like 17-year-old Claire Porter of Madison to express their opinions at the polls. I think if there are more young voters, the better. The more, the better is Joe Waldman's yeah, well, motto. Um, if we don't have a seat at the table, then we'll be on the menu. He's with the organization Next Gen Wisconsin, working to get young people out to vote. So that all of the things that we've been fighting for at uh, you know, with movements like March for Our Lives, uh, those turn into substantive policy outcomes. He says events like this one can make a difference come November. Uh, the enthusiasm that I'm seeing right now is really unique and special. You can't just be one person, it can't just be one voter, it has to be all of us and we can do it. A voter registration party was also a part of today's event at the Alliant Energy Center. And the next stop on the March for Our Lives tour is Milwaukee tomorrow and then the Twin Cities area on Sunday. Madeline O'Neill reporting tonight. Madeline, thank you. Before the event at the Alliant Center, the Parkland students met with organizers in Janesville. There they held a small rally outside Speaker Paul Ryan's office. In response, a spokesman for Speaker Ryan said, quote, he takes this issue very seriously, which is why the House enacted laws that take concrete action to create safer environments for students. After learning Alec Cook will spend just three years in prison for the sexual assault of multiple UW-Madison students, many in the community are upset, wishing he got more time. The Rape Crisis Center says this could cause other victims of sexual assault to not come forward after seeing 11 women share their difficult stories with the judge and watch their abuser not get the punishment they believe he deserved. Because we know that so few people do serve any time, you know, we've, we've come to expect this and this is what we prepare um, victims for. But we hope that we have evolved as a society and that this judge would have evolved as a human being. She says after seeing such a short sentence handed out, some sexual assault victims will think there's just no point in coming forward but she is hopeful others may think their case can be the first where justice is truly served. This a man accused of leading police on a high-speed chase that resulted in the death of a Milwaukee officer has pleaded not guilty to a dozen charges filed against him. 28-year-old Liddell Harrison's attorney made the plea on his behalf today. The officer killed in the crash on June 7th was 23-year-old Charles Irvine Jr. He was the passenger in the car. His partner, who was driving, suffered a concussion and broken ribs. One man is in the hospital and another in custody tonight after a several hours long standoff today on the west side. Police say they responded to a report of a violent disturbance around 5 o'clock this morning. The standoff finally ended six hours later at 11. While police haven't released the cause of the dispute, one man was taken into the hospital while the 31-year-old suspect was arrested. The neighborhood watch says they're afraid incidents like this can tarnish their community and kids who see it all unfold. And I want to get off before I get upset because it's pure BS. <clears throat> Just like when that woman rolled up, she said, who got shot in this neighborhood? 
That's the first thing she said, like all we do is shoot our neighborhood up. We don't. Police say they did the best they could with the resources they had to make sure everything was handled as safely as possible. Turning it over to weather now, finally an improving forecast for this weekend. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield has the details from the Weather Center. Dave? Charlotte, after six straight days of rain as we head into Saturday, I don't think we'll make it seven with some sunshine on the way. High pressure making things nice finally across southern Wisconsin. Just maybe a few blips on Doppler track this evening, but nothing really to worry about. A few drops of rain can't be rolled out, but they'll be gone by tomorrow. In downtown Madison, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies on the Edgewater Skycam. Current conditions at 65 degrees, north-northwest wind only at 3 miles per hour. That dew point at 59 degrees. Temperatures across some other spots, 66 in Lone Rock, 68 in Mineral Point, 63 in Monroe, and 65 in the Dells. That's a little bit warmer, especially for southwestern Wisconsin. For the rest of us, we were here yesterday, basically. Dew points are in the 50s and 60s, so pretty comfortable in the humidity department and wind speeds are definitely less than they were this afternoon out of the north and east at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Your day planner for Madison on Saturday. Lots of outdoor activities this weekend and they're going to be off to a great start tomorrow with temperatures in the 50s to start out and lots of sunshine with highs in the mid 70s. We'll take a look at some slight chances for showers and storms on Sunday in your first alert forecast. Thank you, Dave. New tonight, cybersecurity seems to be at the top of mind for many and UW students are no exception. Last week, UW-Madison students received a phishing email claiming to be from Chancellor Rebecca Blake. UW cybersecurity experts deemed the scam sophisticated enough to warrant a warning to all students, reading that those that the fish, whose subject line was attention required, should be deleted immediately. According to UW experts, this latest scam represents a pattern in phishing attacks. It's really on the rise and it's really increasing in complexity and sophistication. So just keeping it forefront in their mind, you know, kind of those things where if it if it's an offer that sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Over 300 students reported the email as malicious. The university says it will continue its efforts to raise awareness about phishing. The Middleton Police Department is reminding people to lock their car doors even when it's in the driveway and keep your garage closed. This morning, police say they received several reports of thefts from vehicles and residential burglaries in the Hidden Oak subdivision. No forced entry was used in any of the cases. In some of the cases, thieves targeted unlocked car doors to get access to garage door openers. Next at 10, incredible video. A car goes airborne and crashes into a gas station. Rankin County deputies in Mississippi arrested the woman driving the car and charged her with DUI after the shocking crash in Flowood. That is in the central part of the state. The car narrowly missed a brick column and landed between two sets of gas pumps. Amazingly, according to authorities, the woman walked away from the accident unharmed. A few evacuations have been ordered in Sioux County, Iowa for a train derailment this morning. The Lyon County Sheriff says that 30 cars derailed around 415, likely caused by flooding and water going over the rails. The cars are leaking crude oil into the water, but authorities are not sure how severe it is just yet. A building collapse at a distillery outside of Louisville, Kentucky, sent thousands of bourbon barrels crashing to the ground. About 9,000 barrels of aging bourbon were damaged. The building houses roughly 20,000 barrels. Stacks of those barrels can be seen here in the rubble, and officials are trying to determine if any bourbon actually spilled. There are no reports of any injuries. Congressional Republicans plan to spend the weekend ironing out differences in a House immigration bill, even as President Trump says they're wasting their time. The government intends to reunite some children with their families tonight. CBS's Angelica Alvarez is on Capitol Hill. A top U.S. official says the government is reuniting several hundred children in the custody of Border Patrol with their parents Friday night. President Trump answered critics of his recently reversed separation policy by focusing on families of crime victims. They're not separated for a day or two days. They are permanently separated because they were killed by criminal illegal aliens. He also tweeted Republicans should stop wasting their time on immigration until after we elect more senators and congressmen slash women in November. So he just is acknowledging that there, there is no willingness of Democrats to work with us to solve this problem. 
One Democrat broke House rules to play audio of what purports to be children in a detention center crying for their parents. House Republicans plan to negotiate their compromise bill through the weekend, while some senators headed straight to the border. There's a right way and a wrong way to come to America. Texas Senators Ted Cruz and John Cornyn toured child detention facilities in their home state, looking to keep families together and figure out legislation. A group of Democratic senators say they were denied access to a temporary tent city. Even if your sense of humanity is not deeply offended, it is costing you as taxpayers, $2,000 a day for every one of those young people. The senator said the administration's policy now amounts to family imprisonment. Angelica Alvarez for WISC News 3. The European Union is slapping new taxes on billions of dollars worth of U.S. goods in retaliation for President Trump's steep tariffs on European steel and aluminum. The new 25% import duty targets products made in Republican strongholds, including orange juice from Florida and bourbon from Kentucky. America's iconic Harley Davidson motorcycles are also being hit. Now, President Trump says he is threatening to slap a 20% tariff on cars from the European Union. Women in Saudi Arabia are gearing up to drive legally for the first time ever this weekend. In this conservative Islamic country where women still need a male relative's permission to travel overseas or even get married, brave Saudi women fought for the right to drive, waiting and protesting for nearly 30 years to win the right to take that wheel. The first legal day for them to drive is Sunday. In Rock County, Janesville City Council members are preparing to talk about moving a few of its polling places. The Janesville Gazette reports tonight during Monday's City Council member City Council meeting members, alders will discuss moving polling places from Edison and Franklin Middle Schools in Washington Elementary to three new locations. This move comes after the Janesville School District told the city it was no longer willing to host polling places at any schools. The change could impact about 30% of the city's voters. A second Democrat in as many days has dropped out of the race for governor. Today, State Representative Dana Walks of Eau Claire announced he is ending his campaign and now endorsing State Superintendent Tony Evers. Yesterday, Milwaukee businessman Andy Gronick dropped out as well. According to the latest Marquette Law School poll released this week, Evers has a double-digit lead over the remaining candidates. Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin was on Late Night with Seth Meyers last night and brought a piece of Wisconsin with her. During her interview, she broke out a couple of bottles of spotted cow to talk about the upcoming election, the state of Wisconsin, and President Donald Trump. Still to come tonight, a change of pace this weekend. The rain will be clearing out for at least a few days. Your forecast is in a few minutes. But first, a problem many say should have never happened in the first place. Why some residents are still cleaning up days after a water main break on the east side.
Days after a water main break, people who live on Madison's east side are still cleaning water out of their basements. This is on Oak Street, and many of the residents' belongings are now out on the street. They are caked in mud with the influx of water and dirt that invaded their homes. Even cars parked on the street got a bath in that overflow. Residents are unpacking their basements and trying to figure out what is left. They say they are frustrated this happened at all. It was overwhelming. Um, I, I went downstairs and every step you took, it was just squish, 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 and it still is. And we, this is our second day at it. The block is planning on joining together and bringing their case to the city. Each home is looking at hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in damages. The city said they should bring claims to the risk management office, which should be able to take care of them. Local and county leaders are kicking off an annual campaign today to encourage more people to shop local. Today, Monroe Street, where businesses have taken a really big hit because of ongoing construction, served as the kickoff location for Independence Week. It's an annual event to celebrate locally owned businesses in Madison, Dane County, and South Central Wisconsin. Independence Week runs today through the July 4th holiday. Dane County Humane Society is offering discounted adoption fees as it celebrates Adopt-A-Cat Month. Catapalooza starts tomorrow and runs through June 29th. Cats of all ages will be available at Dane County Humane Society's main shelter, Adoption Center West, or at one of three adoption events at Mounds Pet Food Warehouse in Fitchburg. Adult and senior cats will be available for $10 and kittens will be available for $75. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield is here with a look at your forecast. It's, it was rain a palooza for the last week or so in Madison. We just could not get a break from that rain. I thought really? you were going to say raining cats and dogs. You know what? That would have been so much better. <laughs> this is why we need to talk about the story before <laughs> weather because that is so much better. Just she's the best. Out. Yeah, she's the best. I mean, I, I can't even compete. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll stop meowing and get to the get to the forecast here. We have over five inches of rain already this month with still about a week to go in Madison. That is over average for the entire month and the sixth straight day of rain today with three hundredths of an inch of rain in Madison. So not too much, but that still counts as a rainy day. So we're up to 16 out of 22 days in the month of June have featured some sort of rain in Madison. We are climbing up the charts pretty close to these charts, remember the record set back in 1892 of 24 days in June with some sort of rain. That's 80% of the time. Hopefully we don't get that high as far as rain totals, but there's a chance we could break 20 with still some shower chances to go in this month, but not for tomorrow, I think, and not for Monday. We should get some nice weather, maybe just some blips on Doppler track this evening. Nothing too major, nothing that we need to worry about. That low pressure system, slowly but surely, it's a cutoff low, so it really takes its time when it moves to the east, but it has moved out for, um, far enough, that's what I meant to say, uh, to not have to worry about ever-present rain chances as we head into the next couple of days. Our time lapse in Madison, we actually saw a really cool sunrise with just some peaks of sun breaking through the clouds. It looked like the sky was on fire at times. We also did see some more raindrops today and lots of clouds, but some breaks in those clouds, especially into the late afternoon and early evening hours. Right now, we do have mostly cloudy skies once again on the WIC TV sky cam with temperatures in the mid 60s for shake the lake tomorrow. The weather is looking fantastic with low humidity, plenty of sunshine and pleasant temperatures. Most important thing, folks, is that dry forecast temperatures in the mid 70s tomorrow evening and into the 10 o'clock hour still in the upper 60s, so pretty nice. As far as temperatures go over the month of June, we've been up and down. We've had almost as many warm days as cool days, but the last four days have been cool with all the rain in town. I think that starts to change those we head into the middle of next week. Temperatures right now, in the 60s, we're in the 50s for the most part in dew point land, so pretty comfortable outside. Wind speeds generally out of the north at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Our high temperature trend, as I mentioned, getting warmer into the middle of next week with heat index values in the low 90s by the time we get to next Wednesday and Thursday. Tonight, mostly cloudy and comfortable with temperatures in the mid 50s. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a little bit milder with highs in the mid 70s. So we definitely quiet down on future track. There is a chance of seeing some clouds tomorrow, but I do think we'll see plenty of sunshine. We don't need to worry about rain as we head into Saturday. Now, Sunday, that's a little bit of a different story with a cold front 
at least close enough to spark off some slight shower and thunderstorm chances. But then the nice weather visits us once again on Monday. Your seven day forecast showing things staying near 80 over the next couple of days, but we really start to get back into that heat and humidity into next week and the storm <coughs> chances come back as well on Tuesday and Wednesday, especially we are not that far away from the start of July. So this month almost over and hopefully we can keep the rain mm -hmm. here so we can have at right. least pretty sunny July, especially for Independence Day coming up right around the co corner. That would be really nice. That would be very nice. All right. We'll just wait and see what happens. Yeah. Enjoy what we got. Yes. Thank you. Steve Stricker is the tournament host and he's the tournament leader of the American Family Insurance Championship at University Ridge. The story coming up in sports. The Brewers start the night in first place in the National League Central, a game ahead of the Cubs. The St. Louis Cardinals are at Miller Park again tonight. Cardinals pitcher Jack Flaherty took a no-hitter into the bottom of the seventh inning, but just like that, Jesus Aguilar ended the no-hitter and tied the game. That's Aguilar's 15th homer and 48th RBI. That made it a 1-1 game. It's in the ninth, and it's still Cardinals 1, Brewers 1. The Cubs are in Cincinnati, and the lowly Reds are sticking it to the Cubs. Eugenio Suarez turns a 3-2 Cubs lead into a 4-3 Reds lead with a two-run homer in the fifth, and the final score there is Reds 6, Cubs 3. 
Steve Stricker has been very busy playing in the U.S. Open and being the tournament host at the American Family Insurance Championship this week, but it hasn't bothered his golf game one bit. Stricker leads the PGA Tour Champions event after today's first round. Jerry Kelly, of course, has a big fan to following today, under. too. Kelly certainly right in the mix. Here's his birdie putt. He much. coaxes it in. That is so oh, Jerry yes, Kelly. Is. He's wow, four under par, tied people. with nine others for sixth place. But Stricker is the story. Remember, he tied for 20th at the U.S. Open a couple of weeks ago. And at University Ridge today, Stricker hits fairways. And when he has short irons to greens, well, we've seen this all before. 32 on the front, 32 on the back. That's a tidy eight under par, 64. And Steve Stricker leads Steve Stricker's tournament after the first round. He's feeling very much at home. And play out here on the Champions Tour is such that you need to, you need to go low. You need to be ready to make some birdies, and, and this course is is no different. So you, you need to come out here and be a little bit aggressive and uh, roll a few putts in. He is playing World Championship golf. I mean, he's playing PGA Tour. It, uh, he could win any week out there that he got the putter hot because he's hitting it long he, and he's striking the iron so pure. Yeah, bothers me a little bit. <laughs> Brad Bryant is second, only one shot behind Stricker. And how about John Daly? Five under today, tied with Colin Montgomery in third, just three shots back after the first round of the American Family Insurance Championship. So why in the world is Shaquille O'Neal in town for this? Well, Shaq is a brand ambassador for the General Car Insurance, which was acquired by American Family in 2012. Shaq did a couple of DJ sets at a concert at Bree Stevens tonight. He's had a marvelous time in Madison so far and is very impressed with Lake Mendota. I run around. My people here are very hospitable. I had a great time. That's, a, that's one of the biggest lakes I've ever seen. I, I was actually at the hotel and I asked the guy where the ocean was at. He said, no, it's a lake. I was like, big ass lake. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is. There's another big golf tournament at Janesville's Riverside Golf Course this weekend. The Ray Fisher Amateur, Pearson Hunt, who just won his second WIA State Individual Championship at Arrowhead High School, leads the Ray Fisher at 765 today. Tony Romo shot one over 73 today. And at the World
Jesus Aguilar just hit a walk-off home run. Brewers win 3-2. And if you're from St. Louis, you're probably not happy about that. Eh, Charlotte? So, Dave, how's the weather? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's like a walk-off home run because we're getting some nice weather in town for tomorrow with lots of sunshine, maybe a few sprinkles tonight, but that's about it. For tomorrow, highs will be in the mid-70s with plenty of sunshine. Seven-day forecast showing the heat and humidity coming back next week. All right, thank you. Do something good. Have a great week, and we'll see you back here on Monday.